talking about the Baal Shem Tov. And we talked about how the Baal Shem Tov revealed himself. We talked about, to some degree at least, the idea that the Baal Shem Tov had gepayalt l'mayla, was able to be ma'ayr l'mayla, that the Ebi should give him shishim gibayrim. This says in the Rebbe Sichas, it's a true fact. 60 tzaddikim, I'm trying to have 60 tzaddikim, whom he hand-picked, like we discussed last week, and these Shishim Gibaidim came to the Baal Shem Tev. Baal Shem Tev was a rabbi for 26 years. And over the course of those 26 years, the Baal Shem Tev collected the Shishim Gibaidim. I don't, we don't know who those 60 people are. You look in the Svar, but Baal Shem Tev's Talmidim, the famous names, it's less than 60. It's, I, I, I saw at some place 38. But there's so many Svarim and so many Shittas, you know. But the Baal Shem Tev, of course, in addition, had thousands and thousands of Pasha to Yid whom he had a connection. And then there were all kinds of Yidin, even Pachosh of a Yidin, who were not necessarily Tamidia, Baal Shem Tov, and so on. What I want to talk about today is Baal Shem Tov's opponents, Baal Shem Tov's Misnagdim. It seems to me, I can't say this for sure, but it seems to me that the Baal Shem Tov himself did not suffer opposition nearly in the same way as the Mizitra Magadim, and Allah has come of a comma, not in the same way as the Talmidia Magid. In other words, the Machloik of Tichsidim and Misnagdim is really three generations. By the times of the Middle Arabe, the Machloik was over. By the times of the Middle Arabe, there was what you would call a Cold War kind of thing. It was, you know, the Middle Arabe had a strict policy. He didn't let Chassidim talk to Misnagdim. A Chassid lived in a city where there was not enough people to make a Chassidish minion. The Middle Arabe told him to daven be Yechidis and to stand by the wing and to listen to Kriya, not to push it, not to have any interaction. It's a Machtedic time, Chassidim and Misnagdim Pasha became friends. I mean, I, I've told this to you before, it's a painful thing to say, but it's true. What ended the Machlech of Chassidim and Misnagdim? The reform. Because all of a sudden, the differences between Chassidim and Misnagdim didn't matter, because we had a much bigger issue, the Askola. And something that people don't know, I just learned this recently, I saw it. There's a letter, co-signed by Rab Chaim Velazhener and the Pinchas Rezis. The Pichas says from the Gedeli Chassid Admar Azokin, on the Alter Rebbe's Gedeli Chassidim, three years, three years after Alter Rebbe passed away, Tov Kofayim Vav, the Pichayim Velazhnet, and the Pichas says together, together, made a Magbis, a fundraiser, to help Yidin going through all kinds of Tzadahs, which means that in the beginning of the middle of Rebbe's Nesiyas already, there was Shituf Pula, they pushed work together, Chassidim and Misnagdim. But the Machlein Chassidim and Misnagdim, the way I see it, is three generations. The Baal Shem Tev, again, I could be wrong, but the sense that I get is that in the times of the Baal Shem Tev, the Machlekes was not so bitter, it wasn't so angry. It got worse. By the Maggit, it was very bad. By the Alter it was impossible. It was unbearable. And in Das Tachten, the reason why it got worse and worse, because it became less and less about Shita and more and more about personality. Less and less about principle and more and more about, about, about politics. When two people argue about ideas... It's one thing, but when, when it becomes, when you forget why you're arguing and you start arguing about nonsense, not a shkait, and it becomes, becomes, you know, <laughs> it becomes terrible, it becomes bitter. And there's a lot of Lashon Haris. I mean, if you want it, if, if you're looking to read bad stuff, there's Baruch Hashem, Anashir Svarim, everybody has their own version of the history. It's not my job. But again, it seems to me that Bechayv and Baal Shem Tev, the Machlikis, was for the most part uh, a Taira Machlikis. There are Kama of a Kama Sipurim, but I just want to tell you a couple of facts, a couple of details. Number one, the Nei Debihuda. Cheska Levi Landau was a very famous Misnaget Echesidus. If I understand it correctly, he was actually the Baal Shem Tev's Akarev. He was related to the Baal Shem Tev because they shared relatives through marriages. The Baal Shem Tev's daughter, I'm sorry, the Nei Debihuda's daughter was close to the Baal Shem Tev. She tried to bring the Baal Shem Tev and Nei together. And Nei Dib Yehuda remained a strong opponent of Hasidis Kol Yomov. But his Hisnagdus was strictly Teira. It was never personal. I mean, the idea of writing a Chedim was not in his mindset at all. But he was very outspokenly critical of Hasidis because he felt that Hasidis was not the way it's supposed to be. But it was within the parameters of Teira. By Hasidim, you should know. The Nei Dib Yehuda is not at all seen in the same way the Vilna God is seen. The Chassidim is an incredible Dar Chayzeh. The Chachafil was a Moed and Nikam Misnaget. There's a printed Kuntris called Vikucha Rabba. Vikucha Rabba is a Kuntris of a debate 
between the Neid of Yehuda and the Shippet Tufkid. There was a famous Hasidic Rebbe, Talmud Rabbi Shem Tev. Rabbi Yankov Shem Tev Shippet Tufkid. And it's a whole Kuntus which he wrote up upon him, where he writes the nature of the discussions that he had with the Neid of Yehuda. The Nekudah is, the, the nature of the Machleikah is Neid Yehuda Rabbi Shem Tev was, the Neid Yehuda said that Rabbi Shem Tev is doing things Hei Pachaloch. Hei Pachaloch. And everything he objected to, he pushed it down and shakal narach. There's a bevusta ma'is. It's such an interesting story. The Neid Yehuda's daughter was by the Baal Shem Tev. And one fine day, the Baal Shem Tev, tears kriya, he sighs, and then out of the blue, he sighs, krechts, tears kriya, and he sits on the floor for half an hour. And in shiva, in avelis. And he gets up, he changes his outfit, and gets right there. Weeks later, she was by her father, and her father gets a letter from Eretz Yisrael, and he sighs, and he tears his clothes, and he sits on the floor. So she says to him, why are you sitting on the floor? She says, I just got a letter that Erechaim HaKadosh passed away. Erechaim HaKadosh passed away. He was considered the God of Lado, and passed away, and they didn't have to sit Shiva. So she tells her father, I'll tell you exactly the date and the time of his hysterical. And she tells him the the time that she was by the Baal Shem Tev and showed the Baal Shem Tev doing this. So the Rebbe Yehuda said that you're right, but how do you know? So she says, I was by the Baal Shem Tev at that moment. And the Baal Shem Tev tore Kriya and sat on the floor. So the Rebbe Yehuda's response was, Tere Lei Ba since when are you allowed to tear clothes? <laughs> because of Ruch Kedish, it's, 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 it's about Tarkish. Since when are you allowed to be Mzabo, it's Bittu Tere. He went through a series of halachic issues, which are credible, you understand? In other words, they are good, he has Ruch Kedish, but since, since when can you pass Allah Ruch Kedish? So she was very taken aback. So this word got back to the Baal Shem Tev. And the Baal Shem Tev said, now this you have to try and size and figure out, I swear that when the Erechayim HaKadosh passed away, I was physically standing at his bedside. So this was the kind of machlekes the Baal Shem Tev had with the Nedeb Yehuda. Every time it was a Tere de Ketayne, because the Baal Shem Tev was another kind of a human being. But he remained a very strong opponent of Hasidus. And of course, the, the famous Hisnagdas of the Nedeb Yehuda is the L'Shem Yuchel, which is printed in his Tshuvas. It's a very interesting Tshuva, and it, it happens to make sense. The Nedeb Yehuda if, if, if it says, what happened in Hasidus? What happened in Hasidus is that Pasha Tegid and start doing Yonim of Kabbalah. Now, it's not unprecedented because my Sfardim, that's how it is. I mean, every Sfardi, you know, says every single morning, Paschalio. Sfardim say all kinds of holy stuff. Ashkenazim never involved Kabbalah in Minhog. The regular life of a Yid did not involve Kabbalah. In other words, you followed Allah. If you were a Makubu, if you were a big person, for example, the Vilna Gaon himself, so then you did things like Pekabala, but it was never that because you do things like Pekabala, all of your Talmud do things like Pekabala, and all of your followers. All of us becomes Hasidis, we changed our Nusach, which made the Misnagdim totally crazy. I mean, if, if you want to know what bothered the Misnagdim, maybe I'll, I'll finish with an A.D. Yehuda, I'll go through a list, but one of them was Nusach. They, they were so disturbed. Ashkenaz has such a proud tradition of Nusach. Kum get Ashkenazic Jews and adopt... Not, not they changed the Nusach. They changed it, Rahman al to look like the Nusach of the Svardim which was really a problem. And they incorporated into the Nusach HaTfilah for every person in Yanam of Kabbalah. This, this was very, very upsetting to the Messiah. And there's other things. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll, after I finish this, I'll tell you the details. Blineder. So they made the word Tshuva. And he writes about the L'Shem Yichud. The L'Shem Yichud is a business of Kabbalah. And the business of Kabbalah is a Kabbalah. And here comes a group of people. They call themselves Chassidim. And every shoemaker and tailor and barber and unemployed street corner sitter is a Kabbalah. And he was very disturbed by it. And uh, he finishes off the letter, It's a possible. The way that the Abish are straight, are fair. Tzadikim Yelchobah, Tzadikim go on the path of uh, Yasha. And Chassidim, instead of saying, Rishayim, Lashon HaPosach is, Rishayim, Chassidim Yelchobah. This is a very, very strong condemnation of Chassidim. It bothered Chassidim, it bothered the Rabbi, but the Nadi Behuda did the Nadi Behuda did what is so interesting about this is the Hemsha Hasid. The Neid Behuda is 8 o'clock with Hasidim. And they wanted to reprint the Neid Behuda. And they decided Pasha to change the Pasha. To take out the Tshuva, who didn't cross their mind. To take the Tshuva out completely, it's, it's, a, it's a severe condemnation of Hasidim, it didn't cross their mind. But at least just write the Pasha the way it's written. Shalom Darach Avaya, Tzadikim Yechoba, Vodashayim Yekoshlobah, instead of Hasidim Yekoshlobah. So they came to the Tzamech Tzedek. 
They want to repaint Yehuda, and um, they want to change it to be Nusra And the Tzemach Tzedek, the answer was, your Zayda made from every Rasha, and the Chassid, you want to make from every Chassid into a Rasha. In other words, the Tzemach Tzedek did not allow them to touch the Tshuva. Which, amongst other things, reveals the degree of Derecheretz that there was from Chassidim to the Neid of Yehuda. And Yehuda was a very strong critic of Chassidim, Kol Yomov, and like I said to you before, he was a Pshashtikul Kodav of the Helech of Hashem but every tiny had to see this, a tiny is got not The Vikuch Rabbi I have, you can buy it. And read it, it's interesting. And the Vikuch Rabbi, he talks, in that Vikuntis you have also, he goes through all of the titles he has to see them. The Shepetovka answers. Every tiny has a shail and a chubit. It's, it's a Vikuch, it's a very interesting read. Somebody actually told me that the Rebbe once mentioned in a Fabrengen that any person who says that the Nei de Behuda was a Menage to Chassidus is wrong. I don't know when the Rebbe said it and what the context was. But it's believable. The Rebbe said that the Nebuda was Baklal Nata Misnagit. So I'm adding this in after uh, this discussion that we had on the Nebuda Yehuda. Now, the Vilna God was 35 years old when the Bashanta passed away. The Vilna God was full 20 years old. No, the Vilna God was, not a, was, was, was already in the Middle East, he was 35 when he passed away. Of course, he was a God, and he had no shaykhs to Hasidus. I believe that even in the times of the Baal Shem Tev, there were issues in Vilna against Hasidus. But the issues with Hasidus against, Vil- uh, 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 against Hasidus from Vilna got worse in Shpeta Dekadetis. There are other stories. There, unfortunately, I don't remember all the details, but there's a story that the Baal Shem Tev came and he showed up in Brod, in the Klois. Brod had a famous Klois, 300 Goinim, who were about to put the Baal Shem Tev into Achedim. And the Baal Shem Tev Poshet walked in. He walked in, he showed up at the meeting, uninvited, and he asked them straight, point blank, how do you put a person in Chedim, you haven't even spoken to me. And he's mevatel it. In the Lakuta de Burim, there's a Sipur. And I really, if I was a better person, I would have looked it up and prepared it. But the Lakuta de Sipur was, there was an old, old man, who was a very, very big God, and he had many, many children, who were all B'nai Teire, big Talmud de who met the Alter Rebbe, I believe in Shklov, I think in Shklov, but I could be wrong. But he was like in his 80s or his 90s. And when he met the Alter Rebbe, he got up and he made a Shechayonu B'Shemu Malchus. And then he said, he said, in the time of his Rebbe's Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, the Shemtuf, he had gone to war against Hasidim because he felt that Hasidus was a new thing and it was not a kosher thing and so forth and so on. And one night, the Baal Shem Tev came to him in a dream. And the Baal Shem Tev asked him, Hayetachem, you're fighting a war against me. You didn't do a proper chikir dish. You didn't do the research. You, you don't know who you're fighting against. He says, and I woke up in the morning and I made my decision to stop. And his point was, he said, he thanked the Abish that the Abish to spirit him from getting involved in such a bitter machlaik. Just 30 years later or 40 years later, he met the Alter Rebbe and he rejoiced in the fact that he had not gotten himself involved in this whole business. But the Gros is different. The Gra is different because the Gra was Makabal Ashanha. The Gra trusted people. People came to the Vilna Gaon, they told them certain things. There were other factors, but the bottom line is, had the Vilna Gaon, in other words, the Nei Behuda, that every time was a Teda Tai. In the case of the Vilna Gaon, people told him lies, lies, Shkodim, and he believed those lies, and on that basis, Achman Latan, they made Chromis against Hasidim. It's, it's hard for us to understand how serious this is. They made Chromis, a Chedim, with all the severity of a Chedim. Again, in the times of the Baal Shem Tev, from what I surmise, the Machlekes did not get anywhere in this, near this level. Now, with the, with, the, with the Maises gain, you know, that the story was that they came to the Vilna Gon, they said to the Vilna Gon that on, on Tishabov, they saw the Baal Shem Tev sitting with a girl on his lap and eating meat and drinking wine. Shame, okay. It was his granddaughter and it was Shabbos, that's all. <laughs> they told him the truth, it was facts. On Tishabov, the Baal Shem Tev sitting with a girl on his lap, eating meat and drinking wine. With his granddaughter, with Shabbos, that's all. So, it, it, how you present facts has an incredible effect on how the facts are received. So, let's do this, Taka. Let's talk about this, at least for kids and immigrants. What were the issues that the Misnagim had to them? There's no question that one of the biggest ones was Nusach. There's no doubt. No doubt. The Sfadim had their Nuschois, Ashkenazim had their Nuschois. And as we discussed at length last year, one of the basic differences between Sfadim and Ashkenazim was how to incorporate Kabbalah 
into minhag. How do you incorporate, how do you bring in Kabbalah, which was a relatively new thing, into the traditional way of life? Sfardim made all kinds of changes to the Siddur and to the minhagim to incorporate Kabbalah into halacha, into minhag. And Ashkenazim didn't. In other words, Ashkenazim knew Kabbalah, they learned Kabbalah. But Lapel did like it said in Shas. It was a Siddur between a Gemara and a Zaya, did like it said in the Gemara. Chsidim adopted, in effect, customs of Sfardim. The same thing, they adopted the customs of Sfardim. To, when you have a conflict between Kabbalah and Allah, you bring Kabbalah into the minhag, which Ashkenazim objected to, and the, the changes in the city bothered them very much. Ashkenazim were very proud. I guess, I guess the name that very frequently invoked is they followed the marshal. The marshal apparently had issues with Kabbalah. It was, it was a, it was a go on the island of the marshal. And the idea that we are changing minhag, changing the city was very disturbing to them. That's number one. No, Bashem Tev. The al wrote a Nusach. Atrebbe wrote a Nusach. But the Bashem Tev Siddur is not an Ashkenaz Siddur. Bashem Tev Siddur was handwritten by one of his Talmidim. The Bashem Tev Siddur is extant. It's in the Rebbe's library. The, original, the actual Siddur was a Bashem Tev Davanada is in the Rebbe's library. And it's, it's not Nusach. It's not our Nusach. It's, it's basically what you call Nusach Svad. You know, the Siddur Nusach Svad. Exactly what it is, Bediak, I don't know. But it was certainly a change. It, it, Ashkenazic Jews, Davening and Nusach, were at least in part, they adopted many, many minhagim of Sforad, however you want to explain it. It was very, very disturbing to them. Nusach was a very, very big deal. Another issue was this whole business with Simcha. Chassidim always happy. <laughs> it, it, you read in the Misnagdim's books, the Misnagdim wrote books of condemnation against Chassidim. So they describe... Manichem Roisham Lamata, Veragleim Lamaila, Hanikre Kulinzich. They put their head in the ground, their feet near. The whole idea that people, especially B'nai Teda, Tamil Chachomim, should sing and dance and be free and happy was very, very foreign to the Misnagdim. You, you, you must understand that world. If, if I'm not wrong, and maybe this is a bit of a simplification, Ashkenazic Jews didn't sing. Ashkenazic Jews lived in Golis. And when I say Ashkenazi Jews, I believe it doesn't mean Pashat. Their culture was that in Golos, a person is not allowed to be too happy, a person is not allowed to smile, a person is not allowed to laugh. There was a very, very depressed mood amongst Jews, and there was an understanding that this is a halacha. In Zman, a Golos, a person is not allowed to be besimcha because it's a chod mezamikdash. Also, the other Lamal of Pips Chayk Beilam Hazar finished. A person has to be in a Golos state. And the Gala state means that there has to be a certain depression, a certain ungezeugenkeit, and so forth. Chassidim, the Baal Shem Tif, took the whole other approach. The Baal Shem Tif said, without Simcha, how could you serve the Ebesht? And by Chassidim, by the Baal Shem Tif himself, Simcha was a gewalt kezach. This is very disturbing to the Misnagdim. And understand that all of the things that bothered the Misnagdim, but Chassidim, were in your face. They were not that they hidden in a closet. The change of Nusach was obvious. The change of how you wear film was obvious. This, the idea of Chassidim being besimcha as opposed to being in a more depressed state was obvious. And of course, another factor, and perhaps this also is a very important factor, was the whole business of Kavod HaTayra. The previous Rebbe, in his letters, and in the Zechreinus, sings the praises of Lita. People don't realize this. He sings the praises of Lita. The Fidik Rebbe, on many occasions, sings the praises of Lita. Why? Lita had... Unbelievable, unbelievable love for Tehra. The yeshiva system that we have today is a product of Lita. Lita is this country where Vilna is. The, going back hundreds of years, there was an unbelievable chibas HaTehra. And the Fidik Rebbe describes in detail what happened in Lita. There were yeshivas. Yeshivas did not have kitchens. So a bracha from Esenteg. Esenteg meant every day in the week you ate by a different family. And the day that the yeshiva bachar came to that family, they ate the best of the whole week. In other words, it was such a yakras for yeshiva bachar that families who were quite poor would save pennies that the day that the yeshiva bachar came to their house, they had the best meal of the week. So he ate the midaf. And over the course of the week, he went to seven homes, and each one of those homes, he ate their best meal of the week. Because a bentera, a yeshiva bachar, was the most precious thing in the world. And they created an unbelievable, unbelievable chibas atayda. There's no question about it. You, you, Friedrich Rebbe's letters, I could show you the famous letter about Midas Haishtabas. He speaks about the mile of the, of the Litvisha who created this chibas atayda. 
But along with the Schema State, it came what we would call a caste system, a system of segregation. People were divided into groups. In, 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 in a rigid structure, in a, in a city, there was a separate shul for B'nai Teira, a separate shul for Balabatim, a separate shul for Pasha Tayyidin. You know, in some shtib, some communities, you had a shul that belonged to the Chaber Kaddish, a shul that belonged to the Marks mentioned, to the people who sold in the market, a shul that belonged to the... And no, you didn't trespass. You didn't go to somebody else's shul. If a Pasha Tayyid walked into a shul of B'nai Teira, it was called Hedera Kovit. Kovit Atayr. And B'nai Teira, Tamidei Chachamim, were conditioned to demand Chavad HaTayda. In other words, a, a Tamad Chacham was not only honored, he had to expect honor. And if a Pashat Yid didn't show him sufficient honor, he demanded it from him. But the Chavad for the Tayda, the Tayda's the Yiddish is, I'm a Ben Tayda, you have to honor it. In Hasidus, this, how do we say it, didn't exactly work out. Because the Baal Shem Tev, Kaidem Kol, he made such an unbelievable deal out of Pashat Yid. We know the Baal Shem Tev's Av of Fanashim Shutim was Oisig of the Baal Shem Tev brought out their milas. The Baal Shem Tev showed over and over again that it's possible that a Pasha Tayyid is standing in a higher madrigue than a big Talmud Choch. A Ken Takanish Lenin, he's not a learned man, but in terms of his Tmimos, his connection to the Abish, they stand in a much higher madrigue. And then, Bechlau, the idea of divisions, that the Yidin should not interact because the level of Baal Shem Tev broke all of those barriers. And it was very disturbing to them, it's not. Because in, in that culture, in that world, this was a good thing. People of Teda have to be on a pedestal. And people of Teda remain on a pedestal by creating these separations. And Hashem should have destroyed all of these things. There's no question about it. These are just three examples. And there are many other things. Then Hasidim, of course, added Numen Hagim. You know the famous story about uh, somebody says to his uh, father that you have to hate Hasidim. He says, why you have to hate Hasidim? The Nat Flume says, no, 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 they're very mad at the He says, they don't put on film. He says, no, they wear two pairs in the film. They don't need kosher. He says, no, they don't need glad kosher. He went through a list of the, the Hidurim and the Churmas. He says, what's there to hate? But it, it, it was the changes that Hasidim made and the Hasidists made, which was very, very disturbing to the Misnagim. Chalaifen, this is a, something like a little bit, a little bit, a window, a little bit of a taste of the issues of the Hisnagdus that the Baal Shem Tev had. Another thing I want to talk about is Eda Chaim HaKadosh. This to me is a very great curiosity. I heard from Achsidish Yid, who has a shaykh as to grace Achsidish Rebbes, that it says in Sfarim, after I bring in the Teda, that you have to learn every day Zayah. It says in Sfarim that every day Zayah. So the Heilek Eruzhener said that today it's Eda Chaim HaKadosh. The Heilek Eruzhener said that, in other words, today we're not holding by learning Zayah, you have to learn Eda Chaim HaKadosh every day. And in, there are communities of Jews I've met Yidin who every day learn Erechayim, al chassidim learn Erechayim. What I don't understand is, in so many Hasidic circles, they talk about Erechayim HaKadosh with such a reverence, with such a sense of holiness and greatness. And in the Friedrich Rebbe Sichis, I have never seen his name mentioned. Now, I take no, uh, I don't have any pretensions of knowing everything. But I've read, every time, you know, I read the Sichis, I read the Igris, the Friedrich Rebbe tells us so much about the history of Hasidim. And I wonder, the, 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 the things they say about the Erechaim HaKadosh and his relationship to the Baal Shem Tev and Hasidim are unbelievable. How does it happen that there's zero mention of Erechaim in the Friedrich Rebbe Sichas? To, it, to me, it's, a, it's an anomaly, as they say. It's a curiosity. It, it leaves me wondering. Because, I, again, I've told this to you before. Hasidish stories, if you believe them all, you're a fool. Because we know as a fact that there were people who push it, made up stories for Panos. The people used to write books by Chesidim. There were stories of Chesidish stories from the Rabbeim. There were people, push it, who were not from, who made up stories, push it, because it was a way of making a living. You cannot believe every story. And you have to trace the story to its source. I mean, some of the most famous stories in the history of Chesidim have been proven to be categorically false. In other words, they could not have happened. Keep shooting. So you have to be careful. That's why the Rebbe had this rigid, mamish, rigid, shita. If he didn't hear a story from the Friedrich Rebbe himself, it could have happened. And there's different, different madregas in this itself. You know, there were stories that we have in Chabad traditions. But when you read stories in Pelish Svarim, you should know that in the world of Pelin, for every true story, there were ten Baba Mises. And you have to sieve them out. So I'm not Chas saying that everything that you hear about Chassidim, the Ruzhan Rebbe, the Zohar, the Rechaim is like learning Zayar. Again, assuming he said it, 
But it's just to me a great anomaly that in the in the Friedrich Ebbe's writings, and the Friedrich Ebbe has, is the one who has given us our history, there's nothing, as far as I know, about the Rechaim HaGadosh. Having said that, the Rechaim HaGadosh of Chaim Ben Eter, of course you know he lived in Eretz Yisrael, he was a Sfardi. The thing which is interesting about him is he had no sons, he had only daughters. So he learned with them Teira. <laughs> the Peter Shachumish he wrote for his daughters. He was a big tzaddik and a big mukubal. And he had a following. And the stories go that the Baal Shem Tev had a very, very great desire to meet Erechaim HaKadosh. You know, I mentioned to you the story before how the Baal Shem Tev krechzed, and he tore his clothes and he sat shiva because Erechaim HaKadosh passed away. So one of the versions of that story goes is they sat to him, how do you know that Erechaim HaKadosh passed away? And he answered, there's a kavona of the Tilos Yadayim. There's a kavona, a Kabbalistic kavona of the Yadayim, which is known only to one person in the generation. And I did not know this kavana. And all of a sudden, this kavana came to me, so I knew that Rechaim passed away. There is such a version. In other words, the Baal Shem Tev realized, according to these Sipurim, that Rechaim HaKadosh was the God of so to speak. And Kozma, that Rechaim HaKadosh was alive, he was second to him. At the moment that Rechaim HaKadosh is tall, because the Baal Shem Tev was able to get this kavana that only one person of generation has. So in other words, it shows you the degree to which there was this great Rechaim that Rechaim HaKadosh in the Baal Shem Tev. There are stories the Baal Shem Tev wanted to go to Eretz Yisro. The Develt Zok, if the Baal Shem Tev met the Erechaim HaKadosh Mashiach, would have come. And there are stories, I'll talk about this a little bit later, that presumably on three occasions, I don't know three stories, but presumably on three occasions, the Baal Shem Tev tried to go to Eretz Yisro, I mean, Hashemayim, he never made it. He tried very hard to go to Eretz Yisro. He never made it to Eretz Yisro, and that the, the Vart was that he wanted to meet uh, the Erechaim HaKadosh. The Baal Shem Tev had a brother-in-law whose name was Rabbi Gershon Kittever. Rabbi Gershon Kittever was the son of Rabbi Ephraim Abrad. He was the Vashem wife's brother. He was a big gun. And for many, many years, the Vashem hid himself from his own brother-in-law. There's a, there's a very interesting letter. I told it to you before. But Rabbi Shem writes to Rabbi Gershon Kittever, he says, I'm sorry, I don't know how to read and how to learn. My parents died when I was young. I was a Yasin. So I took a job as an assistant Malamed, and I'm hoping to learn a little Chumash. He's, he's, yeah, he's like, oh, no, he was a big tzaddik. He tells me, I'll learn, I'll learn how to read. Stop. But apparently, the Baal Shem Tev revealed himself to Rabbi Gershon before he revealed himself to the whole world. In fact, when the Baal Shem Tev had to reveal himself, he writes to Rabbi Gershon I now have to be Megala myself. I don't want to, but I want you to be near me. It's a famous letter. The Baal Shem Tev says to Rabbi Gershon I have to be his, be his galus. I don't want to do it alone. Please come and be with me. Well, something wanted. The end was that Gershon Kittiv had spent the last years of his life in Eretz Yisrael. And when he went to Eretz Yisrael, he said to Rabbi Shem Tev that he's going to go and meet Eretz Yisrael. So the Gershon Kittiv said to Eretz Yisrael, ask Eretz Yisrael if he knows who I am. So the story goes that Gershon Kittiv came to Eretz Yisrael and he found the Eretz And again, depending on which version you follow, there are those who say that the Eretz Yisrael was not so quick to accept the Gershon Kittivet into his Chavrai, into his Chabura, what he did eventually, and the Gershon Kittivet told him that he's a brother-in-law of the Baal Shem Tov. And he asked him if he knows who he is. He said, the Rechaim HaKadosh says, I have no idea who this person is. So the Gershon Kittivet was very taken aback, because he had had such respect for the Baal Shem Tov. And if the Rechaim HaKadosh does not know who the Baal Shem Tov is, maybe the Baal Shem Tov is not as great as he thought he was. So he tried to use different names, different allusions, you throw Ben Sora. Whatever name you use, the Rechaim HaKadosh is not recognized. Until he said, you throw Baal Shem Tev. When he said, you throw Baal Shem Tev, he said, oh, I see him every day. And he asked him, in the name of the Baal Shem Tev, if they would ever meet, if the Baal Shem Tev and the Rechaim HaKadosh would ever meet Bechayim HaKadosh Bamdain in this world. In other words, Lamaila, they met all the time. The Baal Shem Tev very much wanted to meet the Rechaim HaKadosh, and he asked the Gershon Kittiveh to ask his, his Rebbe if they will ever meet. So the Rechaim HaKadosh said to the Gershon Kittiveh, ask your brother, my Lord, when he sees me, what he sees. Ask the Baal Shem Tev when he sees me, what he sees. So the Baal Shem Tev sent back, I see his whole goof, I just don't see the bottom of his feet. So the Rechaim HaKadosh says, in this world we'll never meet. And if you don't see my feet, in this world we'll never meet. And of course that's what happened, they never met. Now, the Indian lady, since I mentioned the Erechaim HaKadosh, and I also mentioned 
Rabbi Yashi Kitavir, I want to go on to another issue, which is, of course, very powerful. And that is, the Baal Shem Tev wrote his brother-in-law a letter. I think the date of the letter is, Ere Rasham Tov Kuv Zayin. I think. This is the famous letter, Baal Shem Tev writes, that he went to Maile, he did Aliyah San Shama. The Baal Shem Tev used to do Aliyah San Shama all the time. Baal Shem did Aliyah San Shama. He says, when I came to Maile, it was a Moedin Dika Simcha. An unbelievable Simcha. Fantastic joy. So I thought to myself, maybe this simcha is a raya that I'm going to be nostalgic, I'm going to pass away. And they told me, no, it's not your, your time, there's another reason for the simcha. He says, and everybody was running, all the neshamas were running, so I went also. He says, that I went to places that I'd never been before, and I saw things I'd never seen before, and so forth. And then I was coming back, right there, and I passed by the Hegel of Mashiach. That he doesn't say. And he describes how he came to the Hegel of Mashiach, and he asked Mashiach, Osimar, when is Mashiach going to come? And the, in effect, the boss, Mashiach told the Baal Tev, the Kishiyah You have to look up the letter in the original because it doesn't say those words exactly. That's the Toichen. The slogan is, but the, 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 if you read the letter in the original, it's not written exactly like that. And by the way, there's some things written over there which are much, much more than just Rabbi Chassidim. It says, when all Yidin, I mean, I've heard people object. It says, in other words, when all Yidin will be Eisik Epnimi Esatayr and Seyed Esatayr. But this is the famous letter, the Baal Shem Tev. This letter was a letter the Baal Shem Tev wrote to his brother of Geshem Kitvatayt Yisrael. It never got to Israel. This is considered a great miracle. The letter never got to Israel. Had the letter gotten to Israel, in all likelihood the letter would have been lost and wouldn't know about it. The Shliach, whatever the case was, the letter remained in Europe. The first Ksidisha Sefer ever published was the Toldos Antiv Yisif Svarim. Before the Baal Shem Tev Svarim, before the Alta Rebbe's Tanya, the first Sefer was Tov Kuf Mem Aleph, which is 21 years after the Baal Shem Tev Sestalkos. The first Sefer of was published, I think it was the Ben Pedas Yisif. The Toldos Antiv Yisif has other Svarim. Besides for the Toldos Antiv Yisif, there's other, a few other Svarim, one of them is Ben Pedas Yisif. In the Hagdama of Ben Pedas Yisif, this letter appears. In other words, you can't blame this letter on Labavitch. <laughs> Lubavitch was not the first one to publish the letter. The Toldos was the first. The Toldos had Gavaldika Arichis Yomim. I heard once from a year that he lived over a hundred years. I told this to you last week, I think, that there are those who say that he was much older than the Baal Shem Tev God, he was Marich Yomim. The Toldos been paid And I've, again, I've heard from people, all of these things you can take how you wish, that uh, this was one of the things which very much exacerbated the Machleik Yachsidim and Misnagdim was this letter. It was a letter of Baal Shem Tev it. It was meant, it was destined to go to Eretz Yisrael, the letter never arrived, the letter remained behind in Europe. And this is what Chassidim know, the idea of Yafutza, Masech HaChutza, Kasim Adam Al-Kamashir.